Uh, hello. <laughs> okay, this is the strangest podcast we've ever done, isn't it, Jamie? Is it? Yeah. Um, we've uh, well, we've gone for an outside broadcast sort of feel, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. Uh, hence the car zooming past. Yeah. So uh, Jamie and I are just walking back from a rather nice lunch at the King's Arms pub in Cookham. Uh, how long was the lunch? Uh, it was at least four-hour lunch. <laughs> some of it quite liquid, wasn't it, Jamie? Well, some of your bits, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, we thought that as we were walking back to my house to uh, record Fab Live a little later, which you would have seen last week, uh, we thought we'd record a little bit of the podcast on our walk back. Yeah, Jamie? do the intro. So, so uh, who are you? Uh, my name's Richard James, and you are? Jamie Anderson. And I think it's about time we started Pod 22. 22. This is Shane Rummer, and you are listening to the Jerry Anderson Podcast. Let's get started. Let's go. Spectrum is green. The Jerry Anderson Podcast with Jamie Anderson and Richard James. So uh, welcome everybody to the Jerry Anderson podcast, Pod Twenty Two, coming to you live from, from the where Causeway. Are we? We're on the Causeway in Cookham. Right. So uh, why are we here? Well, we're walking back from the from the King's Arms, uh, and we just thought we'd do something a little al fresco. Well, really, because we're up against it time-wise, aren't we? <laughs> yes, so, because despite the fact that we're supposed to have multiple hours to get ready for the podcast and Fab Live, yeah. we spent the whole time eating. Yes. So uh, what do we have coming up uh, this week? It's all the usual stuff, really. Uh, as I say every week, we've got um, news from the Jerry Anderson universe. Yeah, a five course lunch repeating on us. <laughs> yeah, we've got uh, listeners' emails that have been sent into podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk. Uh, and the randomizer from Chris Dale, where he's uh, sat in front of a random episode of a Jerry Anderson show and gives his analysis and observations. Yes, indeed. Uh, also, you can get in touch with us on Twitter. You can uh, tweet us Richard N. James or I'm Jerry, uh, Jerry Anderson. No, well, I'm I wouldn't, not. No. <laughs> not quite. I'm Jamie Anderson. <laughs> indeed. And uh, if you hashtag us Jerry Anderson podcast and uh, let us know what you think, as long as it's clean and, uh, <laughs> you know, relatively... Uh, we can always beep it out. <laughs> That's true. Uh, then we shall repeat it on the next podcast, if you feel like it. Yeah. Um, so it's about this time that we normally head into a bit of a news sting. So shall we wait until we get back to the, uh, the studio? We can do a news insert at the studio, yeah. All right. Probably. Speak to you in a minute. Bye. Hi. Gordon Tracy speaking. It's time for the Jerry Anderson News. That was a nice stroll, wasn't well, it? Wasn't Richard? it lovely? It blew the cobwebs away, didnn't it? Yeah, and especially what do you think after of... five courses. <laughs> I know we really did need that, didn't we? Wow! And yeah. what do you think of lovely Cookham? Isn't it beautiful? It's a beautiful place. Yes, you're yes. very lucky to live there. I know, I know, I know. Uh, Timmy many... Mallet just around the corner, of course. Well, yes, many famous residents: Timmy Mallet and yeah, Chris Barry. Chris yeah. Barry. Uh, that's right. Tim... Tom Rosenthal. Yes, that's right. He's just up the yeah. road. Chris Rear. They're all over here. There you go. Oh yeah. <laughs> Nice, making it rhyme. It is, do you remember that old series called Stella Street? BBC Two, I think it was. It was Phil Cornwall and John Sessions. And yes, I, that rings a bell. The idea was that I think it was Mick Jagger working in the local uh, newsagents. Uh, the whole street was populated with, uh, you know, A, B and C list celebrities. And that's where you it, live, it's essentially. Just, it's a bit like living in Cookham, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Lovely place. Yeah, but what a beautiful afternoon. That was perfect, it wasn't was. it? was. Anyway, so as we sort of mentioned in our literal preamble... Yes, we were ambling, weren't we? We were. Before this. Very good. Um, we've just been to the, the birthplace of Parker's Voice. Yes. Where that event has been commemorated with a plaque on the wall. Yeah. And that was all organised by Craig Johnson, and uh, we were joined by David Graham and uh, John Brown and... Uh, Yes, yeah, Terry Adlam. James, Terry Adlam. Yes. Uh, a couple of fans. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it was lovely. Yeah, it really um, was. So, yes. Uh, it's a big thanks. I think it was uh, Chris Gowers, wasn't it, to... Uh, uh, the landlord, the there. yeah, and yep. um, I, I'm sure he. I must just say, I'm sure he'd be delighted to see anyone out there. I mean, it really is worth doing a bit of a Jerry Anderson pilgrimage around here because there are so many uh, pubs and old buildings that are associated with the uh, Jerry Anderson and his career and uh, and the various productions. 
uh, get yourself over here and have a, have a pint or two at the King's Arms. It's lovely. Absolutely. Head over. Yes. Um, yes. Very nice food too. Yes. So thanks for organising that, Craig. Uh, thanks to Chris for yes. uh, putting on a lovely lunch and thanks to David and co for just being great fun. Yes. So I, you'll hear more about that in our interview section, in an interview-ish section. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where we'll have some more uh, from the day. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, moving on from... Thunderbirds to Captain Scarlet. Oh, yes. Last week, last yeah. Thursday, in fact, saw Cy Grant's birthday. Um, uh, now, Cy passed away a number of years ago, but to celebrate his birthday, we've uh, added another episode to our Beyond Anderson series. Ah, uh, yes. Put together by, obviously, the uh, randomizer's very own Chris Dale. Mm-hmm. Um, and it explores Cy's uh, life and career, but also uh, his activism, too. He was a, a, a major activist in several areas. Oh, yes. So, fascinating video on the YouTube channel there. Go and check it out. YouTube.com slash Jerry Anderson TV. Mm-hmm. I think I said slash then, but I meant slash. slash. Yeah, we like That's slash. Fine. Actually, Slash from Guns N' Roses used to live around here as well. There you go. No way. It's true. Tap You're making though, it up think, now. Up the road. No, I'm not making it up, honestly. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, uh, Firestorm, <laughs> Richard. Or you know Slash, thing as you call been... him. Yes, Firestorm, yes. Firestorm that we've been talking about a bit too yeah. much, probably. No. Um, continuing to rack up the views on YouTube. Over a quarter of a million on YouTube alone. That's extraordinary. It's amazing. If you haven't seen it yet, what are you doing? Yeah. Why are you even listening to this podcast? Yeah. Uh, YouTube.com slash Firestorm HQ or just go to the website FirestormHQ.com. I mean, we say it's amazing, really. People have been waiting and crying out for this for years. Actually, we shouldn't be surprised at all, should we? Really? Well, you know, you never want to assume, do you? No, true enough, true enough. Um, and also on the firestormhq.com website, we have added or are starting to add some extra behind the scenes articles, interviews, etc. Mm-hmm. And I've started uh, that uh, with my perpetual power of puppetry article, slightly Great. updated for the Firestorm website, so you can go and read that. Great. Uh, <clears throat> on some merchy, merch, merchy, merch, merch. Oh, here. no, don't <laughs> get me started. Hang on. What's this? Merchy, merch, merch. I mean, <laughs> that's like a red rag to a bull, Jamie. It doesn't need its own theme. It's but fine. I, I think you'll find it does. Nope. Leave that with me. Nope, stop it. Be quiet. Uh, <laughs> as discussed uh, last week, Captain Black Friday is coming. So if you need yeah. to stock up on Jerry Anson bits and pieces for Christmas gifts yeah. for yourself or, uh, you know, just give them to any person in the street if you like. Yeah, why um, not? Black Friday is coming uh, and we'll be doing some amazing deals across that weekend. Like what? Uh, so also- what you got? What sort of thing? Well, I don't know yet, because I'm I mean, still working sort of, on that with Tim. Yeah, what sort of merchandise have we got? You know, talking mugs and T-shirts and hats, I don't know. Yeah, the usual yeah. stuff. Great. DVDs, Blu-rays, uh, a few uh, script books, nice. uh, novelizations, uh, possibly the MEV and Hovercraft might oh, yes. be on sale, although they are very limited now. So yeah, yeah. let's see. Um, yeah. I think the beanies are going to be back in stock as well, or Whoa. woolly hats for those yeah. um, <laughs> over 25. Yeah. Uh, so the UFO and uh, International Rescue... Uh, Woolly hats will be back in stock. I tell you what, time for December. They're pretty cool. What we could really do with is a Terra Hawks bobble hat, couldn't we? With a with a with a, a zero bobble, bobble. Yeah, it might be a bit niche, Richard. But thanks <laughs> okay. for the suggestion. Just me then, yeah. Okay. Uh, speaking well. of suggestions, actually, yes. what merch do you want to see? We'd love to know. Aha. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. If you drop us a Apart line, from a, a Terra Hawks beanie, which is obviously a no-no. That's no. too niche. Uh, no, but bear, bear in mind that it's very difficult to make toys, so don't request die-cast toys or repressed dinky toys from the 60s because it's just not commercially viable. Yeah. But if you're looking for uh, calendars, books, yeah. uh, T-shirts, hoodies, etc., mm. posters, um, anything like that, badges, key rings, any particular thing that you think would go down well, you'd like to see and others would too, yes. then let us know. We are all ears for, mm-hmm. uh, well, no, no, not really. All eyes. Not, not all ears. read your message. No, uh, we know what I mean. Yes, yeah, okay. We're, we're, anyway, we're ready to listen to and read from <laughs> your words uh, if you send us some suggestions. Actually, so looking at some of the, uh, the photographs uh, that I've already seen from the King's Arms this afternoon, I think I am all ears, to be honest. <laughs> it's just an unfortunate angle, Richard, don't worry. Um, <coughs> so please do send those over when you get a chance. We'd love to hear your suggestions. Um, but do be prepared for Richard and I to say, nope, sorry, too niche. Mm. Um, if you're well. going to suggest uh, an investigator replica oh. um, uh, chandelier that you can oh. swing on, oh, come on. Uh, it's but- not going to happen. Oh. 
Uh, and if you get that reference, then you truly are a Jerry Anderson fan. <laughs> uh, now, that's all exciting news. There's some slightly disappointing news this week, Richard, which is ah. we've heard from Big Chief Studios that their figures are further delayed. Oh. Um, they've moved factory. Just They want to get things right, which is admirable, absolutely. And we've suffered from this kind of thing before ourselves, so we do sympathise. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's another month or so's delay on the Scarlet and Three Brothers uh, figures, so Alan, Gordon and John. I see. Um, Although, if you have ordered from the Jerry Anderson store, had pre-ordered, then you will now get a special signed art, art print signed by Mary Turner on the Scarlet item. Um, and Tim will be in touch soon to give you an updated delivery date. But, uh, yeah, real pain, but yeah, these things happen. And, they uh, do. Thanks for bearing with us. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so there you go. That's all the news I have, Richard, unless you've got any other news because you'd like to interrupt me with news sometimes with actual news, don't you? Uh, I don't really have any actual news, 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 no. No, I don't. It's probably a relief. Yeah, (laughs) it's probably a relief, isn't it? No, Mm. we should should say we 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 mentioned the the space precinct DVD and uh, and soundtrack, which is coming out later this month. Oh yes. Um, And now we mentioned this message actually from Ian Jacklin, who tweeted us. We mentioned this on Fab Live, which uh, went out uh, last Monday on the uh, Jerry Anderson Facebook uh, page. Uh, Ian Jacklin got in touch to ask if someone could tell him if the uh, the advert brake bumpers. Uh, have been removed for the Space Precinct DVD box set because uh, he said the reason why I'm asking is I had the US release and after every five minutes or so it becomes rather distracting. Mm. Well, that's quite funny because no. after five minutes or so, Officer Orin becomes rather distracting as well, doesn't it? But uh, <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I guess off. yeah, I'm, I'm guessing they will have been removed for this uh, for this new release from uh, from. Network. They're from the UK masters, so ah, it'll be the UK yeah. version, which has got one one spinny shield ad break in, I think. But, okay, uh, it yeah. certainly won't be as. Um, ad break bumper filled as the US says. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, excellent. Great. So there we go. There we are. So that's it for the newsy news 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 this uh, this week. Um, please do get in touch with us. Uh, you can email us podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk. Uh, and we'll be reading some uh, listeners' emails very shortly. Later on, of course, we have the randomizer from uh, Chris Dale. Uh, so I wonder what he's been uh, subjected to this week. Well, stay tuned to find out. And uh, rather than that, well, we have several very short interviews uh, or shortish interviews this uh, particular podcast uh, detailing our uh, our visit this afternoon to the uh, the King's Arms to unveil our jolly Parker's jaunt plaque. Yes, exactly. Um, so all of that still to come. Uh, meanwhile, on Twitter, of course, now Professor Brian Cox, we know, is a big. Uh, Jerry Anson fan. I yes, if you saw he this. Loves he tweeted, it. Uh, yeah, he tweeted this week that he was watching an old Space 1999 episode, and uh, he said, "I wonder what Peter Cushing's agent said to him." It's a bizarre picture that one. It is. Do you know picture. also, um, Professor Brian Cox was at Jonathan Ross's Halloween party and oh. went in his Moonbase Alpha costume. <laughs> Fantastic. So there you go. <laughs> He's a big fan. And finally, Jay got back in touch. Do you remember Jay? Now, we all enjoyed this, didn't we? Uh, challenged me to sing uh, the closing theme to UFO in the style of uh, the old Newsy Newsy News, uh, which is basically a sort of a discordant hum. And Jamie joined in as well. And I said to him, well, listen, if I do it, put, pop a couple of quid towards children in need. And he got in touch on Twitter saying, fair play to you, mission accomplished, and a debt's a debt. Thanks, guys. And he did indeed. Uh, Bung a few quid their way. Thanks, Jay. Very nice. So well done, Jay. Thank you very much. Yeah. So if you have any charitable uh, challenges you'd like us to undertake, <laughs> oh no, then Why you did feel, you say that? Feel free to send them in. Well, we don't have to do them, do we? If we do, it'll be fun, <laughs> and maybe we'll make a few quid for charity. Yeah. Um, obviously, we uh, support a couple of charities. And Entertainment and the Jerry Anson podcast, mm-hmm. uh, including Alzheimer's Society, where we have the Jerry Anson Tribute Fund, um, the International Rescue Corps, mm-hmm. who uh, do humanitarian and rescue work all over the world, and the Young People's Puppet Theatre. Yeah. So if you have a challenge and you would like to give some uh, cash to anyone <coughs> of those three, do email it in to podcast at jerryanson.co.uk. We can't promise anything, but we'll do our best or possibly worst. Yes, yes. Oh, and also there is a final bit, I suppose. By the time this podcast goes out, we'll be coming quite close to this. Um, I don't know if many people would know, but I adapted one of uh, Jerry's old sitcom ideas, a treatment that Jamie found after Jerry oh, yes. died. Um, it was a couple of pages of A4 with some notes and a bit of dialogue about a proposed sitcom that was never made. Uh, well, Jamie very kindly said to me, uh, well, you know, do you want to do something with this? Knowing that I write the odd play here and there. And so I adapted it into a play called The Fat of the Land and it's to get its world premiere uh, near Tunbridge Wells on November 24th, I think that week, by the Blackham Country Players. Yes. And uh, with a bit of luck, we're going to try and get there and see it, aren't we, James? We so are. It's going to be uh, an interesting mission to coordinate fun. that, but exactly. we're going to do it. Yeah, and we'll uh, we'll take some pictures if we can as well and uh, yeah. pop them up somewhere. Yeah. Maybe see you there. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be, yes. 
Now, Richard, I haven't yes. got any t- time to uh, gather a, a container of no. um, emails, but I do have a pile here. Excellent. Uh, so oh, should yeah. we get on to listener emails now? Yeah, pick an email, any email. Okay. Shuffle uh, it. Here is the first one. Yeah. Well, oh, oh, hang on, fine. Yes, well, I'll it. shuffle them. Now, this will scum you, won't put it, it? Put it back in the back and I'll take one out. Okay. Uh, okay. There you go. Uh, got it. Yeah, there we are. Aha, uh-huh. this is Peter Dernan. Uh, Peter Dunn says, gentlemen, which he thinks avoids any unnecessary billing arguments. Yes. Mm, not sure it does, <laughs> but okay. Uh, firstly, thanks so much for reading my email on the podcast. Absolutely made my day. I'm assuming he means the previous email and not this one. No, no, it, was the pre- it was the previous one, wasn't it? With the, yeah. the photos from uh, the Indeed. cocktail in Goa. That's it. My uh, Blu ray of the minisode arrived 10 days after I got back from holiday. Thank you. It makes me incredibly proud to know and tell everyone that I can that my Kickstarter contribution helped to get the process to that point. Absolutely, it did, Peter. Uh, the fantastic news about production of the Brackets first 26 episodes was the cherry on the top of the cake. Uh, the product is amazing, perfect blend of live action effects. Ultra marination, CG, and all with a nod to what has gone before. I can't praise the whole team enough. The documentary really shows the passion, enthusiasm, enthusiasm, and professionalism of the whole team. It's pretty oh, obvious that Jamie has been peddling so hard to get the job done. <laughs> it is pretty obvious, isn't it, Peter? Yeah. Uh, hopefully, a holiday has been planned before it's time to jump back on the treadmill and get the 26 episodes finished. I know it's been said many times, but I'm absolutely sure Jerry would be so proud of the efforts to keep the Anderson name and products out there. And now there's something new. Best wishes from a much cooler Herefordshire, Peter Durden. Oh, yes. thanks, Peter. Lovely, Lovely words. Thank yes. you. Yes, back from his holiday in Goa. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, I suppose we have mentioned, haven't we already, the whole 26 episodes being filmed next year? Pretty sure we did, but yeah. we can do it again. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a whole series of Jerry Anson's Firestorm coming. Yeah. Uh, filming starts in uh, <laughs> spring 2019, and it's all very exciting and quite terrifying. And yes. It's very, very busy. But, uh, uh, and then you can have yeah. a holiday, Jamie. Well, I, do you know what? I've, <laughs> I've blocked this weekend out. It's my first weekend off all year. Great. First so everyone weekend. around yours then? <laughs> no, I'm locking the doors. I'm closing the <laughs> curtains. Everyone can can get lost this weekend. Uh, but then it's it's back to full-on work, I think. So yeah, anyway, yeah. Peter, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, Richard, I've got one here. Mm-hmm. Hang on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, whoops. I bashed my thing. Uh, bashed mm. my microphone. Oh, right. uh, Glad you cleared anyway, that up. Here we go. Look, somebody has gone for the same approach here. Yes. Gentlemen. Uh, that, that seems to be the way to go, isn't it? That's the way forward. Mm, s- yeah. Smart, I suppose. I mean, <laughs> not so original, though. Anyway, <laughs> gentlemen, uh, having just uh, last week watched the Firestorm preview and been blown away, I was blown away oh, all over again by the announcement in Pod21 that Firestorm is actually going to series. Hurrah. I live in Japan, so I imagine I'll have to wait for the DVD release, um, but I will buy it when it becomes available. I don't think you'll have to wait. There should be a yeah. Japanese broadcaster in due course. You think um, so? As a Jerry Anderson fan since some of the earliest US reruns in the early 1970s, um, I like this. Good. Bravo to all concerned. Sincerely from Michael House in Tokyo, Japan. Wow. P.S. Oh, yeah. He says, mm-hmm. as a long-time resident of Japan and a Japanese English translator, I suggest that the heroine's name would be better pronounced Nagisa. Uh, accent on the first syllable rather than Nagisa as it has oh. been in the minisode. Yes. Just nitpick. Everything, everything else is spectacular. <laughs> uh, now... Yeah. Totally fair enough. Interestingly, uh, um, Naoko Mori, who is Japanese. Yes. And is Nagisa. It is Nagisa. Uh-huh. Um, but, so, yeah, Michael, I don't doubt that you're right. Uh, you know, naughty us for not being more careful. Well. Uh, but uh, I, lo- I love that tidbits like that can come yes. from all over the world. And from yeah. And who, you know, Absolutely. grew up in the US and now in Japan. So, Michael, thank you very much indeed. And I suppose it's okay to kind of anglicise names, isn't it? You know, for example, if I were to go to France, they might call me Richard, mightn't they? They might, you know, they might Frenchify. Is, is that Dicky. a word? <laughs> Spotify. Yes, thank Stitcher. you. Thank you, thank you. Anyway, Richard. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's more. There's more emails to get through. There and is. You know, so, yes. you know today's randomizer is is long as well. Oh, okay. So. Okay. I'll crack on. So do you so remember? Get Chris, on with it. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Burnham last week emailed us uh, oh, about yeah, he his did. son loving classic Thunderbirds and going to bed with his Frank Bellamy artwork. Do you remember that? As you do. Yes. Yeah. yeah I said uh, it was sharp. Yeah. Well, he gave us a long list of gifts that this lucky lad was going to get for his birthday. And true to his word, Chris has also sent through some pictures of the gifts being given and unwrapped and he sent yeah. some beautiful pictures of his son there what a happy little chap he was look at that look at him so sweet look at yay. his little face Thunderbirds yay brilliant that's so sweet and that, and in fact that, that's a quote that uh, he sent through hasn't it yeah Isn't I think it? it might be yes rocket ship yay Thunderbirds that's Thunderbirds yeah pauses to study the end papers I love this book 
That's so cute. Isn't that sweet? Thank you so much for that, Chris. It's very nice. Good to, yeah, as we say, it's an intergenerational thing, isn't it? It's great to see kids still in love with this stuff. It's really sweet. Yeah, and and also I I noticed a lot of people handing down uh, Firestorm uh, to their kids already, you know, watching it going, ah, this is like a new version of the thing I used to watch, watch it. And then comments have been like flowing in uh, of, of people saying, oh, my son's been watching it. My daughter's watched it. She loves it. Brilliant. So the yeah. handing down continues. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, right. We've got two more, Richard. I'm going to okay. grab one now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh. oh. Paper cut, careful. So, no, it's all right. You're Thank right. you, though. Um, Gary Renforth has written in. Oh, yeah. Uh, hi, Jamie and Richard. Oh, well, that's torn it. Hey. Uh, thank you so much for reading out my email in pod 13. Gosh, all those pods ago. Yeah, nine I can't. Pods ago. Yeah, I can't even remember that. I'm afraid. Uh, oh, yeah, that's very rude. <laughs> uh, I remember. I'm pleased to report that I'm now listening to each podcast when it comes out. It's part of my re- weekly routine these days, and long may it continue. Yes, here, here. Uh, when I said I enjoy almost all Jerry Anderson productions in my last ah. email, I'm not really sure what I meant. I think perhaps I was thinking of Terror Hawks, oh. <laughs> but this was, I think, due to my not seeing the series, uh, not seeing series two of Space 1999 when it came out. Um, or even being aware that it had been made at the time. Oh. I'm not sure why. Um, and contrasting series 1 of Space 1999 directly with Terror Hawks. Uh, mm-hmm. These days, I enjoy Terror Hawks and have the Blu-ray volume. Great. I'm glad to hear it, Gary. Yes. Thanks, too, for the information about the Space Precinct and its use of video for uh, its effects, like Star Trek The Next Generation, I believe. I think you're right there. I will be getting the DVD set and hope it might be out on Blu-ray sometime in the future. Mm-hmm. Mm, well, so do we, but don't yeah. hold your breath. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> finally... Uh, I watched the Firestorm mini this afternoon on YouTube and I'm delighted that it has 87,000 views in four days. Pa. Well, it now has... 87,000? I think it has 287,000 wow. views now, doesn't it? Incredible. Or more. And by the time this goes out, it'll be even more than that. Yes. It is very good indeed and due to the amount of hard work that went into it, it looks effortless. Huh, I'm glad to know that because it <laughs> certainly wasn't that. Yeah, but that's the um, idea though, isn't it? That's, that's it is, the of idea. course. Yeah. Great to have Nick Tate involved yes. too. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, and even with such a short episode, I was able to identify with and care about the characters. Hurrah! Um, that explosion is fantastic. Yeah. Or even FAB. I hope a full series will be forthcoming. Look there. forward to the Blu-ray set. Best wishes from Gary. Yeah, well, Gary, as you may have now heard in this one or the last podcast, yes, a full series is forthcoming. Um, yes. So thanks for the kind words. I'm really glad in that short time you're able to identify with the characters because that was a very, very difficult thing to try and achieve in seven minutes. Yeah, I love so. Sam. I love Sam Scott. I think he's a, a really sweet character. I look forward to getting yeah, Is that because he's, he's brave but a bit dumb, Richard? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah maybe he reminds me of someone. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, now, um, oh, Jamie, here's one here. Uh, now, yes. uh, last one for today then. So this is from, uh, this is from Jack Knoll. Uh, who says, Dear Richard and Jamie. Hmm. Uh, brackets or would you prefer rich me no uh, no 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 this is no thanks. I thought not uh, I hope you both well Jamie your Mr. On impersonation was quite superb last week <laughs> maybe when the time comes to make new new Captain Scarlet you'll get the part joking aside I hope you're feeling better are you feeling better Jamie I am feeling better thank you very yes, much uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying the podcast and listen every week while walking our dog through the rainy streets of Portland Oregon wow lovely all over the world from Japan to Oregon that's amazing isn't it uh, congratulations on the release of the Firestorm Minisode. I can't get enough of the theme music. I'm sure Richard will be able to make up some lyrics for it, akin to Akma Marina from Stingray, or I Wish I Was a Spaceman from Fireball. Now, there's a thought, Jamie. Have you thought of that? Well, you, well, you have, but you've just repeated the same word and modified <laughs> word over and over again. So. Uh, I have a question for you both. Which Anderson vehicle would you be your transportation of choice to whisk you away on your dream holiday? Would Richard be sunbathing on the front of Stingray in the Bahamas? There's an image. While Jamie was propping up the bar aboard Fireflash? Why has he perhaps... put me in the bar? <laughs> because he knows you so well, Jamie. Uh, hmm. Or perhaps, uh, for something a little more uh, economical, you would both take a camping trip. Get this. You'd both take a camping trip together, towing a caravan on the back of Father Unwin's Model T Ford from the Secret Service. <laughs> What do you think, Jamie? The choice is yours. <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know, actually, for a holiday. A I mean, holiday? You want a bit, bit of space and, uh, you know, comfort, wouldn't you? Yeah, I, mean, I think, fa- you know... Fab One would be quite nice for for a domestic holiday, I think. Yeah, that's true. I'm not sure how comfortable I'd feel with it aquaplaning me anywhere else. Yeah, I think I'd have to go with Thunderbird 2. Because, uh, you know, those pods are going to be very useful, aren't they? You know, it's sort of a giant flying caravan. In absolutely, case, isn't it? yeah. So you can have like thinking? a yeah, you could have like a portable toilet pod, couldn't you? 
you know, so you wouldn't have to use the toilets on the on the campsite. You Great. Have your own. Right. Pod two is a chemical loo, is it? I mean, is that the sort of thing you were thinking, Jack? I don't know. I don't think he was thinking that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe we need to work on those answers. <laughs> Give them a bit more thought, perhaps. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> mm, I'm just trying to think if there's any other exciting ones. I mean, I always wanted to um, uh, fly in Treehawk from Terrorhawks Bazaar, even though it's not very exciting. Oh, yeah. The, the launch was quite cool out of the tree. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, might head up to Spacehawk for a bit of a break up there. I don't mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, thanks, Jack. Yes. And thanks also, I should say, the subject of that email was, um, hope I'm not too late for Pod 21. Well... well <laughs> You were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So welcome to Pod 22. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so thank you to everyone uh, for, for getting in touch with us on uh, podcast at jerryanderson.co.uk. Oh, you can yes. always uh, find us on Twitter as well, and you can uh, tweet us there, uh, Richard N. James, or I'm Jamie Anderson. Hashtag us Jerry Anderson Podcast so that we Please see. Please do that. Uh, and uh, like, for example, Jeff Owen, who says, yay, finally heard my name check on the Jerry Anderson Podcast. When this came out, I'd only heard up to episode three. Uh, I'm glad to see the guest quality is still high. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yes, and he uh, included a screenshot as well of, uh, I think he was listening to it on iTunes. So yes, uh, Jamie very often asks if you can take a screenshot of whatever platform you're listening to and just, just tweet that so everyone knows that you're listening to the Jerry Anderson podcast, that would be great. Or even a podcast selfie. Take a picture of yourself with your headphones on listening to the podcast, either at work or we've had people, uh, oh, I don't know, fixing vans and um, yeah, making... Fitting uh, baby changing, changing tables. tables. In theatres. So the wherever you are, dogs. take yeah. a picture of yourself and uh, and pop it on Twitter so we can see it and see where yeah. you are. And also, listening to us. if you're if you're thinking about writing in, don't be afraid to do us a little voice memo instead oh, yeah. of uh, an email. Yeah, um, we'd love to play out some more of your uh, your recorded messages rather than just reading out the written yes. ones. Yes, you That's know, right. give people a break from our voices. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so do send those in podcast at jerryanson.co.uk. Yeah, uh, Richard, <coughs> should we move along to our? Yeah. Uh, mid middle section. I can't yeah. even call it an interview section. Really. Uh, a middle eight. I suppose they are. Yeah, in the middle eight. <laughs> Uh, and what have we got this week? Well, this week, as uh, you will know if you've been listening very carefully through the uh, the previous few minutes, we spent the afternoon at the King's Arms in Cookham with none other than uh, David Graham and uh, Parker himself and assorted other guests, where we were commemorating a rather special event. Well, here we are at the uh, King's Arms pub in Cookham for something of a family dinner, really. Because Lunch. we have lots of uh, Jerry Lunch. Anderson <laughs> lunch, yes, uh, luminaries sat around at the table. One of whom is is David Graham. Hello, David. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Now I know you've told this story a million yeah. times yeah. before, and I'm yeah. sorry to ask you again, but for the sake of the podcast listeners who may not know, why yeah. are we here today? Well, we're here today to celebrate the birth of a famous, I think, voice, which happened when Jerry Anderson took me to lunch here and there was a waiter, I forget his name now, mm. uh, and he, Arthur, 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 Arthur. Um, and he came over and he said, would you like to see the wine list, sir? <laughs> so, you know, and Jerry brought me here specifically to hear this bloke. Yes. And um, that day Parker was born. Ah. Oh. And uh, he's been a nice little learner ever since. Because <laughs> you weren't filming... I don't pay him commission. No, I should think no. not. You weren't filming so very far away from here, were you? No, in... in, in um, oh, Jesus. Slough. Slough, of course. <laughs> Lovely Slough. Yeah, Slough. And would you have had any thought, 50-odd years ago, that you'd be sitting here today? No, but... Um, I mean... I'd done four series before Thunderbirds no, 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 no. and um, I never thought I'd be here yeah. again today so it's a wonderful feeling yeah. to come here yeah. to this pub which I remember oh. I don't know I, I may have sat in that corner with Jerry at the wow, time wow right over there yeah. by the window so it's, it's just an amazing feeling to be here and did you have any sense at the time that this was the you know something of a a lasting legendary production that you were part of and a legendary character as well or well, did that come much later i think it came later but there had been this there had been a slow build up because the preceding series had been very very popular mm. and the techniques of filming and the special effects and had been growing and growing and growing and the budget mm. was for today ginormous yeah 
And so, you know, it wasn't unsurprising, yeah. but it, it took a while to take off. Yeah. But when it did take off, boy, did it take off. Yes. Now, I asked yeah. you earlier, before we, we started yeah. recording, whether, whether, it's, uh, whether you've ever felt it's been something of a millstone around your neck, the part No, the part no, it hasn't been a millstone. Yeah. Because I was able to join it up with my acting career, which, yes. you know, I had did a lot of stage work. And I was at the National Theatre with, with, with Laurence Olivier's company. And yeah. I'd done shows with, with the great Leonard Rossiter and Arturo Ui, mm. that fantastic production when he played Hitler and I played Goebbels. Yeah, I mean, right. It, yes. it was just yeah. ginormous. And so what sort of commitment was it for you, playing that part? So you were you able to do other jobs at the same yeah, time? Yeah, that so was you a marvellous be... thing. Yeah. So, you know, like when Stingray happened, I was doing something else, so yeah. I never played any basic regular characters in Stingray, but I guess voiced quite a few. Yeah. Yeah. So and that, that would involve going yeah. into a booth once, twice a week or month? Or... Well, maybe once, once a month. Yeah. But the fact that I was able to marry up my voice career and my acting career mm. it, it has always been wonderful. Yeah. Because, you know, when I started, it was basically the stage and not much else. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. There was only one channel, that was the BBC, of course. Yeah, yeah. So the voice, the, the aptitude I had with voices has been, it's been wonderful. Yeah. Lifesaver, really. Yeah. Uh, and we've all, we're also joined by uh, Craig Johnson around the, uh, around the lunch table. Now, I mean, as much as we're here because, really, of, uh, of David, we're also here because of you today. So explain what... Amazing uh, job Yeah, what part, done. what part you played in getting us around this table today, Craig? Um, well, I've heard the story um, about how the voice of Parker's found and in, the, in this pub and uh, I've heard it from Jamie's dad when he was on tour and I've heard David say it and when I um, heard Jamie interviewing David on in the podcast I know it was a throwaway comment but they said it must have been a plaque at the um, the King's Arms mm. and I thought well a good idea that was mm. I didn't for one minute think that I'd be successful in getting one put up here but uh, yeah. here we are yeah so what was the process of that who did you get in touch with first well um I looked online, Investigate did actually who owned the pub and it's a large company called Mitchells and Butlers. And uh, after numerous emails mm -hmm. and old fashioned handwritten my, um, letters, I wrote to the CEO and got a response eventually from their uh, operations manager, a chap called Ian Collins. And he, um, he gave me the green light that one could come out. And then over weeks and months of emails going between the two of us about a design and what they'd find acceptable. Um, one was created, mm. and uh, although it's quite simplistic, it's what the company wanted mm. to fit in with their uh, their uh, their pub. Yeah. And um, yeah, again with contact with Chris, the manager here. Yeah. And the plaques here. And amazingly, so are we all. Yes, and you were explaining to me a little earlier that uh, it's all something of a of a surreal day for you. How, does it, how do you feel? As a fan, <laughs> um, it is. Very surreal speaking yeah. to you, Jamie, and uh, I, I. I have, I can now say I've chauffeured Parker. <laughs> was, was, I, I am. I brought David here so much yeah. so when we were in the car park. I said to David, I said, I know it's a bit crass, but I've got to get a photograph of you in my car. And <laughs> here, here he is. Yeah. Great, well done, Craig. That's fantastic. And a uh, big thanks to Chris as well here at the uh, the, the King's Arms in Cookham. Uh, for giving us the opportunity, yeah. for treating us so well today as well. Yeah, well, amazing meal. menu. Yeah, it's been delicious. Yeah, my... yeah, great. Uh, so here we are after our five-course meal with uh, with another guest. Uh, name, rank, and number, please. You don't want to know my rank. That's a <laughs> long while ago. <laughs> <laughs> and you are Chris Gower, the landlord of the King's Arms in Cookham. And it's uh, all thanks to you that we've had a, a fantastic afternoon here. So thank you for welcoming us uh, so warmly to the King's Arms this afternoon. Mm. My pleasure. Really nice. Thanks to Craig, but I've just yeah. facilitated this. Now, when, when did you first hear about all this, and what were your initial thoughts? Um, when Craig emailed the company, I guess around about seven or eight weeks ago, mm -hmm. my initial thoughts were great. Fabulous, let's do it. Had you heard of the story previously? No. <laughs> no, I was, I was searching. Yes. I've got many years to go back, yeah. but no. <laughs> and what, I mean, were you aware of the of Thunderbirds, the characters? Of course, yeah. I grew up that? with Four Feather Falls and ah. worked my way through Stingray to Thunderbirds. Ah. And I think I sort of left 
around about Captain Scarlet. Like, oh, OK. As a teenager. How vivid are your memories of those early shows, then? Yeah, very good. Did you have any idea at all there was such a strong local association with the... No, I didn't. No, Cookham's a real hotbed. But uh, yeah. no, I wasn't aware of what went on here. Yeah. Although, about 18 months ago, there was a post-production party for the people who actually did one of the um, film CGI. Ah. Um, Thunderbirds, ah. and they came here to celebrate. Did they now? Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. And in fact, they did tell me that Jerry um, sort of conceived it sitting in here. Oh, but right. I wasn't aware of the park. Yeah, yeah, I see. So you've decided that uh, it would be an apt thing to do to sort of commemorate it uh, here at the, at the restaurant, Absolutely. at the pub. Yeah. Uh, so how have you how have you done that? What have you what have we been doing today? Okay. Well, we devised our Parker's yes. menu. Yes. Okay, we have had five courses. Yes, they are. Thunderbird one, yeah. celebrated with a rocket. Yes. You don't want me to read the menu. Uh, come on, just give us oh, a brief okay. flavour. All right, okay. <laughs> Here we go. Thunderbird one, Scott's rocket was an amuse bouche. It was very amusing. Made us smile. Yes. Okay, Thunderbird two is Virgil and Gordon's green pea and mint soup, followed by Alan's stellar surprise in Thunderbird three. Yes. Um, Thunderbird four was, of course, fish being an undersea creature. Oh, and Thunderbird five. Uh, in orbit, we had the, um, the planet which melted. Yes. Uh, much to uh, John's disgust, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> That's right, yeah, exactly. But, uh, and then Lady Penelope's friends came to play, but only three of them actually featured. The Comtesse Marion, the Baroness Nadine, the Marquess de Riscal, and yes. the Mouton Carré. Yes, the beautiful wines that you provided for us. I've had too much of, far too much of, <laughs> to be doing this. Uh, now, how much did you have to research for that menu? Were you, were you sort of familiar with the Thunderbird 1s and 2s and 3s and the names, Alan? Oh, and, I remember uh, them from my childhood. Really? Sure, but I just went online and actually plucked the pictures oh. and thought, five course apt. Yes. What can I match? Rocket goes with the rocket. Now, cetera. we've been talking a little bit today, and I think you might be aware that I have a slight association with Jerry Anderson universe in that I, I played a part in uh, Jerry Anderson's Space Precinct. Mm -hmm. So I live in Cookham. Uh, maybe in 20 or 30 years' time, you might dedicate a corner of the pub to me and unveil another plaque. Is that a possibility? If I've got the same longevity as young David, <laughs> then I'll be more than delighted. <laughs> However, they'd judge me criminally insane if I was still a publican in 30 years' time. <laughs> Great. Well, Chris, thank you so much for inviting us on today. It's been a lovely afternoon. No, thank, thank you, you very much, indeed. Chris. Thank you. Great. Oh, and do pop along to the King's Arms in Cookham if you're passing uh, and take a look at the picture, stay and have a drink and have a meal in their beautiful restaurant. It's a, it's a lovely place to visit. Uh, one of the oldest pubs in, in the village, I think, uh, dating back uh, four or five hundred years. Rumour has it that Henry VIII himself stayed here, so you could be uh, quaffing ale in the same bar as a Tudor king. So do pop along if you can. Just tell us who you are. Uh, my name is uh, Terry Adlam and uh, I worked for Jerry on Terror Hawks and also the creator, co-writer and director of uh, Dick Spanner, P.I. <laughs> Thank God you added the P.I. Yeah. And, uh, and also writer of, and a uh, voice artist on Terror Hawks audio series, That's right? That's true, yeah. I was lucky enough to do three of them and one of them, I played the Queen. <laughs> it was me. I played the Queen. Could blame me. Well, that's everyone convinced now. Yeah. Uh, she's not really here, no. despite what you might think from hearing that. Uh, and what have we been doing here today, Terry? Oh, we've had a, a fantastic afternoon. Uh, we've been celebrating uh, the uh, birth of Parker. Um, well, actually, the birth of Parker, because that was be a maternity hospital. But basically, we're in the King's Arms in Cookham, uh, uh, in Berkshire, um, where the story that everyone knows about Jerry coming here, chatting to Arthur, the wine waiter, and him saying, would you let me see the wine list, sir? Oh, that's very and good. Pretty good, yeah. yeah pretty the rest good. is uh, hysterical, a history. <laughs> and, uh, Thanks, yeah, Terry. and we had Graham here today. Um, amazing guy. David Graham. David Graham, sorry. Yeah, Graham. David yeah. Graham. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Missed the oh, pause in there. Yeah. Uh, uh, Amazing guy, and we celebrate. We've got a, a plaque or a plaque, um, plaque or a plaque, 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 plaque. Uh, up on the uh, up plaque. on the wall here in the King's Arms in yeah. Cookham. It's been, and we've had a fantastic spread. It's been, it's been. Oh, I've had yeah. And is that the real reason you turned up, Terry, for a free lunch? Oh, of course. Yeah, me too. Of course. Yes. <laughs> no, I was I was honoured and chuffed to be invited to such a historic event. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Is there any more chips? <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and uh, how do you feel about this local history, Terry? The fact that 
you know, Park was born so close to you and in such informal surroundings. Can I be serious just for a moment? <laughs> yes. That's enough. Um, no, it is. It's fan it's fan it is fantastic because just around this area, you know, not only with the, the Slough Trading Estate, Stirling Road and Ipswich Road, um, but you've Maidenhead, you've got here, you've got Cookham, you've got Islet Road just down the um, just down the road. And I think doing a plaque here is, is really got to get things moving because why isn't there anything on the Slough Trading Estate? Yeah. I did something uh, mm. earlier this year where we did this virtual reality walk around. Uh, the trading estate, and we did have uh, bits about Thunderbirds, but there should be a, a, a plaque somewhere because it is so important, and you know, it'd be great for Slough Estates as well. Um, so, yeah, I think you know, it's a very historic place, not only just for films, but uh, you know, for Thunderbirds. So, well, there we are. We had a lovely day, didn't we, Richard? We had a very lovely day. I mean, we really thought we were going for a little plate of sandwiches, yeah. and, you know, putting a plaque on the wall, and, uh, yeah. and there we are suddenly... Yeah, dear old know, Chris. Having a sat us down. course meal. Yeah. yeah, all Thunderbirds themed, which was very, very sweet, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Very did, clever of it. Did you um, find that uh, amuse bouche a little bit on the spicy side? No, you know, what? The, the fruit? Pineapple, pineapple and mango thing, yeah, because I, I bit into an enormous piece of chilli. That'll be it. And, uh, and then had to down a glass of wine to um, oh oh is that what is that why? that's my excuse right. oh, anyway, okay, but, uh, okay. Yeah, we did have to be quite careful didn't we because we were doing fab live that night we kept saying i better yes. not have any more because uh, you know got to go live yeah, in front of at least 11 people as later. people have seen on that video version yes. the table was rather packed it with was. empty wine bottles and glasses anyway we had a lovely time thank you everybody for uh, bringing that together yes um, and actually i think craig and chris if you head over to the facebook the jerry anderson facebook page i think there's a, a short well uh, quite a good uh, video report up on there isn't there that was posted yes and who who put that together richard well that was charlotte of course my darling wife who came with us and uh, took some pictures and uh, filmed some stuff and then edited it all together in time for us to put out on fab live but it's also up on the, uh, the jerry anderson facebook page so. yeah she did a brilliant job thank yes. you charlotte yes Great. Well, if now, you don't want to miss more things like that, then you should obviously subscribe and do all the things that Richard tells you to do every week. Yes, yes. Do I have to do it now? We can subscribe, do it now. rate, yeah. review, yeah. and share. Yeah. I mean, that's all. It's quite simple, really. Yeah. Tell yeah. us what you think and let other people know that we're here. Please get on with those things. Thank you. <laughs> um, you can do that before or after the next section. Ah, here we go. Many people's favourite. Yep. Uh, it's another return to Chris Dale's epic randomizer. Are you ready, Matthew? Ready. Oh, Father Unwin, I was wondering if you could... Oh, great. Oh, folly, folly. <sighs> Typical. How am I supposed to review episodes when I'm one-third of my normal size? Well, as far as I know, I think you would want me to say, read it between the lino. Yes, yes, very funny. Uh, could one of you press the button for me, please? Yes, of course. Mustn't keep you from your work. I was forgetting your diminished stature. Um... Could one of you drop the printout down to me, please? Most certainly. Most certainly. Thank you. OK. Well, that about fits in with my day. Um, Matthew, could I possibly trouble you to uh, loan me the use of your suitcase for a little while? Uh, I might need something to scream into. Yes. Well, as if things weren't bad enough, we have one of the more infamous episodes of Space 1999's second season to get through today. Here's... All that glisters. Oh, folly, Terry Bold. Now, Space 1999's second season has a bit of a reputation for uh, for maybe not being up to the, the quality of the first season. And there are certain bad episodes in the second season that I find, well, extremely boring. There are episodes like Rules of Luton, uh, New Adam, New Eve, and in particular, my least favourite from the second season, A One Moment of Humanity. They are dull, they are just lifeless and plodding, um, but they are bad in the same way that a bad episode of, say, Blake 7 is bad. This episode 
makes it onto a lot of uh, bad episodes lists. But this one is bad in such a unique way, all its own, that I find it fascinating. It somehow, like, goes right round the other side and, and becomes interesting again. It, uh, by all accounts, was an extremely unhappy production. Uh, oh dear, the shot of the eagle going through the cloud layer is just embarrassing. Um, yeah, an extremely unhappy production. When I've said in previous episodes that Martin Landau doesn't look happy, you can see it clearly in every frame of this episode. He looks ready to kill. You can say that again. And apparently, Fred Freiberger was really hooked by the concept of this episode. The entire cast hated it, and that made him love it all the more. Strange man. Oh no, too close too quickly can be dangerous. Mm, definitely. <laughs> now here we have uh, Patrick Mower is playing well, an Alphan geologist, uh, Dave Riley, who, uh, despite being Irish, fancies himself as uh, used a loudmouth Irish Romeos as a cowboy. For some reason, I don't know. Geophysical scan confirms why he is here. I don't know what the point of this character is. Um, it's something that I have mentioned before. Characters being inserted into the shows to do deliberately stupid things to keep the plot moving. Usually, that comes from one of the regulars suddenly having a lobotomy and and acting the fool. This guy has been brought in specifically for this episode to be just oh annoying as hell um and i suppose it's much like with the whole tony's beer brewing thing this is meant to be entertaining character development my response to that is if you're going to do some character development why not develop a character who is actually already on the show what's the point of bringing in this guy for one episode only to then never bring him up again and he survives the episode, unfortunately, he doesn't get killed. Um, why, if you're going to focus on characters, focus on the characters that are actually in your show. I don't know, bring Dr. Oh, no, not Dr. Matthias. Dr. Matthias, quit. Um, um, you could bring along Ben Vincent or, or Bill Fraser or just somebody. Unless this was going to be his introduction and you were going to keep bringing him back. Otherwise, this doesn't make any sense. Anyway. Oh, I was going to say I've talked enough about him, but here he is again. Hey! That's my lucky hat! <laughs> lucky hat, oh dear. Never seen one of these before, eh, Maya? Well, that's the trouble with your planet. They never had the wonderful state of Texas. Yeah, she also doesn't have a planet anymore, you git. Don't rub it in. We had many wonderful things on Zycon. All right, everybody, gather around. And you really don't want to be annoying this woman who can turn into a 10-foot dinosaur monster and rip you apart with her bare hands. It's not a very good idea. But as we're going to discover, this guy is full of not very good ideas. Anyway, the story of this one is that the Alphans, uh, once again, their life support system has run out of something. Um, it was always running out of something in the second season. So they've come to this planet to find Milganite. Um... Not sure why it needs six people for this mission. But there we are. Hey, hey. I can hear that Milgan I call it. Oh, shut up. Well, fine, you go off and find it. We'll leave you here. And you call us when you're done, okay? Now, it may be because I'm watching this in high definition. I find this planet set extremely unconvincing. I'm not sure what it is. It could be the bright pink sky, the fact that the the back of the set is casting shadows on the backdrop, the painted mountains in the background. It just looks extremely unconvincing, which is a shame because this show always produced really good planet sets in the first season, uh, and later did so again in this season. I don't know what went wrong here. What a... Beaut! What a beauty! 
<laughs> Say hello to Big Dave. I hate to break up your romance with this rock, but we've got work to do. No. The rocks understand me, Commander. My wives never did, but the rocks do. Oh, your wives left you. Fastest gun on Alpha. Oh, God, I'm being hit with crap. I'm being hit with crap from all sides now. Oh. Anyway. Get ready to dig for gold. So they found what they think is a, a vein of milganite. And, uh... Oh, Dave has brought along a little revolver thingy. Oh. <laughs> he, he's brought along this uh, scanner thingy that he's using as, like, a, a six-shooter in keeping with the whole cowboy thing. Um, he's done that whole spin-it-round-on-your-hand thing, and in the process, he knocked his uh, stun gun from its holster, and it was hanging on for a, a second. And as he walked out of shot, the, the gun must have fallen out of the holster because I heard a thump and it doesn't seem to be there now. I've not noticed that before. Um, do rocks usually scream when you shoot them? I mean, I'm no expert cowboy geologist, but nobody seems uh, bothered by the fact that it's screaming. Although they are interested in the fact that it seems to be bleeding. Hello? Something's off balance. Yeah, the rock's got a vein of chutney running through it. Very mysterious. <laughs> oh. Um, Tony went for a look at the rock. Tony has now been zapped by the rock. This is extremely concerning. Everyone's got their worried expressions. Oh, well, except Patrick Mower, who... Uh... Oh, <laughs> Martin Landau. He's dead. Oh. Oh no. Minus two hours, 45 minutes to lift off. Tony's dead. I'm sure he's really dead, and they're not just faking us out. They wouldn't do that to us. Helena. I'm a doctor, John, not a miracle worker. Ow. Oh, oh ow. The ow. The unknown. Ooh. Tony's brain is still functioning, Helena. It's one of the mysteries of life, Maya. Okay, okay, I can forgive the uh, the Star Trek ripoff line only because that subtle dig at Tony's intelligence was included afterwards. That's, uh, I'm sure it wasn't there deliberately. That's beautiful. The functioning of Tony's brain is one of the mysteries of life. That's just uh, backed up by so much evidence in this show. I am sorry. Oh, what have you got to be sorry for? You just made a huge mistake brought in an, an alien killer rock and it killed one of our friends. Alpha needs that milliganite. Maya, I am sorry about Tony. But I promise I'll do even more dumb things to get the rest of you killed as soon as I can. Oh, Patrick Moe nearly fell over just then. Is it Raiden? And I should say that I, uh, as much as I You're don't right? like the Dave Riley character, uh, it's only because of the writing. He is written to be such a colossal pain, but it's nothing to do with Moa. Uh, I think he does a, a reasonable job with this. With my molecular structure, I won't be in as much danger. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. No, you don't, little lady. No, if anyone's going to do something stupid around here, it's going to be me. That's what I'm here for, after all. Martin Landau is... Um, is pacing like a caged animal. Uh, and I get the feeling Nick Tate is similarly unimpressed by what's going on here. Um, Patrick Moe is probably having fun. I'm glad somebody is. Oh, Barbara Bain is uh, pootling around in the back of the eagle here, looking at Tony, looking at the medical monitor. Oh, we'll go back to the medical monitor to have another look at it. Um, what are we going to do now? Oh, we'll walk to the door. We've not been over here yet. Um, nothing going on there. Hmm. We're not exactly operating at breakneck speed this episode. Now this uh, episode seemed to be, as much of the second season of Space 1999 was, influenced by Star Trek. We heard that earlier with uh, that spectacular mishmash of just awfulness from Helena. But this episode also seems to heavily borrow from... Uh, Star Trek's Devil in the Dark, which was about a 
a, a silicon based life form that was uh, uh, killing off miners um, but at the end of it there was a, a reason for it it wasn't uh, an evil life form as such it was just doing what it could to, sub uh, to survive and protect its children this episode kind of follows the same plot but it does it in no way anywhere like as good as Star Trek did alive no well i don't know what well, he must be <laughs> where is your where did you get your doctorate i'd love to actually see it do you still have it or have you just uh john been lying all these years i think that that rock has control of tony john i'm scared stay where you are you're safer there until we find tony unless he comes back in which case you're not so now as you can possibly here. Tony! Everyone is out looking for Tony. Tony has now made it over to the uh, the larger rock and blasted off a smaller part. Uh, and since we know that the big rock is alive... Tony! Still looking for him. Um, since we know the larger rock is alive and it is controlling Tony in some way, isn't this thing sort of self-harming itself now? It... it uh, why do I care? Why do I care about anything that's going on in this episode? Nobody making it did. And it must have been so discouraging, uh, both for the returning cast members who had come back to this show being told, oh, it's going to be bigger and better and more wonderful than ever, and for the new cast members who were thinking, oh, we've got this, this new series that we're going to be part of, and then they got to make... Tony! One moment of humanity followed by this... It must have been just so discouraging. And I, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall of this set when this episode was being shot. Because everybody looks so unhappy, so fed up. And I'm sure there must have been some absolutely cracking arguments when this was filmed. He said he was alive. Well, let's walk up to the rock that we know can kill people. Let's spend as much time we as possible we'll take it. standing next to we'll it. We'll dump it in space. So the Alphans have just tried to to leave the planet and go back to, to Alpha, and nothing's working. And this is presumably down to the influence of the uh, the rock creature. And again, it, it was something that happened in the in the Star Trek episode Devil in the Dark. The creature, I think, stole part of a nuclear reactor from the base, and if they didn't get it back or... If Scotty couldn't build a replacement or something, the whole place was going to go up. So there was kind of that that element of the story, the sort of sabotage element being repeated here. But it doesn't make any sense really here. You could imply that the rock is drawing off energy from the eagle, but all the lights are still on, the life support system's still on. Their own comlocks still work when they're calling each other, even though they don't work to call the base. It just... Eagle Ford Moon Base Alpha, do you read me? Oh, we're back to staring at this rock again. That thing's got to go. It's too dangerous for the eagle. Yes, as we've said about five times now. Maybe we can find some way to break through to it. We'll work on that outside. For God's sakes, John, don't go near it. It could kill you. So could old age. Eagle Ford Moon Base Alpha. True. Were you planning to stand here for the next uh, 50 or 60 years until that happened? You paid. Blue. It's yellow. What was blue? Rock Colors, the movie. Orange and blue. I wonder what color kills. Oh, I hope we find out soon. I'm, I'm, I'm done with this, I think. It was trying to communicate. Say something. Yeah. Um, how'd you figure that out? All right. Maybe it's angry. Its natural habitat is out there. And we've taken it out of its natural habitat. Did we? Got the same word twice in the same sentence. Who wrote this? Bring us. Maybe it could brainwash the computer into believing that Milganite was here. Yeah, and maybe Santa will come down in his magic helicopter and we can all have sweets. Um, you're just pulling stuff out of the hat here, aren't you? You don't know. 
they're not taking the time to really investigate what's going on. They're just leaping to conclusion after conclusion after conclusion and running with it. Gets what it wants, it'll release Tony. Which I suppose is um, is part of the problem when you have an antagonist that you can't communicate with. But even so, you could do something more with this idea. And I don't think this idea is necessarily a bad one. Um, if realised in a certain way, it could be quite effective. That rock has power, energy, intelligence, and purpose. <laughs> I... As much as I wish I could have been a fly on the wall when this episode was being made, I wish I could have been a fly on the wall when Martin Landau first read this script and realised some of the lines he was going to have to say. I completely understand why he would be so angry. I don't blame him at all, because I would be. So now, on the wild theory that the rock is intelligent, we're going to have Maya turn into a rock. Um, I think she's in communication. And again, it, it shows that they are just working on the assumption that this thing is alive. I don't know if it was yet established in the show, but it was later on that Maya could only turn into something that was alive. But here she's just magically the rock. Um, oh, Tony's gonna... No, not Tony. Well, I was only trying to see if our weapons could be effective against it. You fool. <laughs> <laughs> oh... Oh, Martin Landau, I love... Suppose I kill Maya in retaliation. I love you anyway, but I love how much you not only don't care about this script, you are just letting it show. It's wonderful. Please, more of that. The rock changed colour. It's green. How long I green. The colour for rocks is green. Yeah, Barbara Bain is getting... Uh, very short shrift in this episode. She's just being left with Tony. Oh, but now the prop guys are shining green lights in her direction, preventing her from leaving. How will she get out of this? Um, I am on the edge of my seat. But that's only because um, my microphone is on the desk, so I have to crouch down quite low. Uh, otherwise, I don't care what's going on. See, this is how we having, we're having to jump through hoops to make this immovable prop a threat. And the way that threat is realised is just with pathetic green lights being shone on the display panel behind her. Helena, I told you to get out of there. I can't get out! I forgot how doors work. Okay, so the, the alien force thingy has uh, has got her in the green beam of whatever. Oh, no. There's a shot of the eagle from the outside with green glitter all over it. Can you get out? Door won't open! Try to get out. You didn't try to open the door. It immobilised you before you got there. What are you talking about? It's exploring our store. Oh, um, yeah, the, the green light is rolling around the Alphan supplies. But there's a, a case there, very prominent with the words Tom Bowen on it. Uh, now, Tom Bowen was the name of Brian Blessed's character in uh, The Day After Tomorrow, or Into Infinity, if you prefer. So this is evidently a reused prop from that that one-off special that was produced between the two seasons of Space 1999. Um, why did nobody think to take that off? Unless there is an Alphan on, on Moonbase Alpha named... Tom Bowen. Uh, yet another role for Brian Blessed to play in this show. Oh, you know it's bad when I'm I'm thinking about characters who aren't even in this Big show. Rock. Water. It needs water to survive. Yes. And it'll get it any way that it can. Yeah, I think I get the scene. Now, the rock. Well, all these rocks needed water to survive. What you mean when Helena said that the rock needed water to survive and then said that the rock needed water to survive, that means that the rock needed water to survive? You really are a, a leading geologist, aren't you? You you certainly know your stuff. When they panic, they don't think too well. Amazing. Imagine the geological paper I can write on this. Oh, yeah. 
held prisoner on pink planet by angry rock that needed a drink. Is mostly water. That's not a geological paper, that's an embarrassing confession about the worst day of your life. And Helen is in there with that rock. Yes, she is. We know she's still there. John, the green light has moved off of me. Make a break for the door. Oh, yeah. Brilliant strategy, thank you. And get the door open! What? Use your comm lock. That's what it's for. It's lifting off! Well, thank you for clarifying, Captain Obvious. You've got a wet track mind and a stone age skull! No, wait a while! Hello, listen, I need to law you can think of as a damn rock! Hello, look! Get away from me! <laughs> you know what? I don't want to watch any more of this show. I just want to watch the Martin Landau being cross for an hour show. That's what I'm enjoying out of this. Um, you know, there is not an actor alive who could make the line you've got a one-track mind and a Stone Age skull work at all. Um, so he doesn't even try. I'm quite right too. Helena, what's happening in there? Oh, don't ask her. She doesn't know. I don't know. know. Oh, she doesn't know. I don't know. She doesn't know. She really doesn't know. No change. No. Uh, well, that was, that accomplished nothing. It tried to take off. The rock has begun to pulsate. Couldn't get very far. We've landed Come again. Yellow. You could cut that out entirely, and we wouldn't miss anything. With star charts flashing on the screen. It's probably looking for a place where there's water. It's facing a deadline the same as we are. Yeah, which deadline runs out first? Well, how? What? Why would the rock have a deadline? Until you guys arrived, there was no water on this planet, and yet the rock had survived. Why is the rock in any danger of dying? Are the star chart still flashing? No, it's just stopped. Oh. Now listen, Helena. We think that rock is trying to get off this planet. If it is, <laughs> as evidenced by it trying to get off the planet just a few minutes ago, with you inside, as if you didn't know. I want the two of you to get behind those rocks and keep out of sight. Alan, you come with me. Yeah, again, you have woman who can turn into ten-foot dinosaur monster. Oh, no, no, you go and hide, woman. This is a job for men. It's like, she could, she can run rings around you guys in the terms of getting stuff done department. Why do you kick her out of the way? Uh, anyway, dead Tony not dead Tony whatever is now up and on his feet again off to get more rocks <sighs> I have to wonder if uh, how much of the day to day running of this show Jerry Anderson was involved with during the second season I know he said that with Fred, Fry uh, with Fred Freiberger as the producer he would let him be the producer for better or worse. But I have to wonder if there were days like these when he came down to the set to see what was going on and uh, then just despaired. And he'd have every right to. You too, huh? You think The Rock is all I care about? Well, no, I think you also care about acting like an imbecile. Um, Pretending to be a cowboy, pretending to know what you're talking about, pretending to be a character on this show when you clearly aren't. Um, I could go on, but honestly, I don't care enough about you to do so. Well, in addition to um, being able to control Tony, uh, Koenig and, J and Alan have just zapped him with their stun guns and he has been transported back to the Eagle. So that means that the rock has the power of teleportation. In that case, why doesn't the rock just teleport itself into the eagle? And just do... Why? What? How? Oh, no. I, I... It's not because usually with bad episodes of Space 1999, the second season in particular, I, I find them just boring. As I said at the front, this one is like a badness all its own, but it's never really irritated me before. Usually I, I found entertainment value in how truly awful it is. I'm not sure why this time it's getting to me the way it is. 
but I'm really not enjoying this. We have Tony's com lock. We're going to use it to try to open the eagle door. Why can't she use her own com lock to open the eagle door? Hey, cowboy! He's gonna do something stupid! <laughs> That's uh, Martin Landau's response whenever Fred Freiberger appeared on the set. Come on, let's get out of here. Um, how? If you've been pretending that you can't get out... Oh, now you can, apparently. I'm not even going to question that because uh, Dave has now forced them out anyway in an attempt to, um, I guess, kill the rock, thus proving to everybody that he's not a git. Um, unfortunately. Tony! He'll be all right, Mama. Yeah, you know, he just had complete cardiac arrest and was pronounced dead, but he'll be fine. We're going to get into how he recovered from that? No, no we're not. No, because Dave has now fallen under the control of the evil alien rock. That's the cliffhanger going into the final act, uh, advert break. As if we even care what happens to this guy. I don't care. I don't care about anything anymore. He had to go charging in there. We owe him for that. It got Helena and Tony out. How are you doing? Well, I suppose when you're as stupid as he is, eventually at some point your stupidity is going to lead to positive results, uh, even if very rarely. That rock could become too powerful to beat if it gets reinforcements. Alan? Well, it seems pretty much all powerful at this point anyway. It's beating you guys at every single turn. And that's something else I find really disheartening about this episode, is that we've seen these guys battle so many truly evil, powerful people and, you know, unknowable, mysterious forces that have almost overwhelmed them, but they've always come through. And now they just seem like a bunch of utter morons. All of them. So the latest... Uh, thrilling development in this story is uh, Dave has uh, just taken into the eagle what he thinks is another piece of the rock but is in fact Maya disguised as a rock um, with the aim I guess of communicating with it but unfortunately um, get out of there I can't it's pulling me towards it but you can break its grip it's using most of its power to fuse me! This is an odd shot of Maya... Um, ...trying to break free from the the attraction of the rock. It kind of... It's giving the impression... Red is dead! Red is dead! ...that within the Maya rock, there is a very tiny Maya. Um, I, I suppose it's... it's meant to imply that there's a the mental struggle but the the image is of like a very small Maya trapped inside the the larger rock it's a bit odd but she's all right now easy there it's okay it's okay you're all right now. you're all right, you're all right. How, how is he which is good because uh, I like call Helen and Tony we're getting off this planet yay it's almost over Nucleodactive crystals, we've got plenty of them hey, on board. Of course, we can make it rain by dropping the crystals on the clouds. Well, then why didn't you think of this before? If that was an option all this time, then why any of them? We'd like to drop some nucleoid crystals into those clouds. Nucleoid? Mm -hmm. Oh, you just made that up, didn't you? Mm hmm. Yes, the. Uh... Maya? Yes, Commander. The all set, Rainmaker? Yes, Commander. I suppose it, it's nice in a sense that they ultimately don't end up killing the the baddie. Get us some crystals. Um, that they've they've given the the rock what it wanted. They've made it rain again, and possibly even brought back some form of of life to this planet. However, and I keep going back to the Star Trek comparison with this episode because it is so so on the nose I think in Star Trek the creature 
was killing to protect its young, and Spock was able to communicate with it. Didn't get away with any Milganite. No, but we got away with our lives. Yeah, it's uh, not really much of a consolation when you came to this planet looking for the material that would keep your life support system going and you didn't find it. So, in a way, this was a complete and utter disaster. <laughs> Helen, you think you can find a way back? Can I? I don't know, can you? Let's go home. Hmm. Well, that was all that glisters. Oh. Um, I think I would probably have to say that so far, this is the the worst episode that the randomizer has thrown up yet, and I say that taking Torchy into account, because Torchy, as awful as an episode of Torchy is, is only 10 minutes long. This was 50 minutes of good, thoughtful characters acting like morons. Oh, at least it's out of the way now. Well done, Chris. Thanks, Chris. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Chris did actually say there, Richard, that uh, he, he thought this was the worst episode so far that he's had to sit through. Yeah. That includes several rounds of Torchy. So. I know. Isn't that amazing? Uh, what I mean, went it, wrong? It's such a shame, well, isn't it? Well, what went wrong is the overarching question for all of season two of Space yeah. 1999, I think. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah, and and this story, as Chris said, was a particular favourite of Fred Freiberger's. Right. And everybody else hated it. Right, yeah. So um, yeah, if yeah. you like All That Glisters and you're listening to this podcast, then do let us know and feel free to send us a little um, rebuttal to <laughs> yeah. Chris's review on The Randomizer. That would be but, good, actually, yeah. Let us know why um, you think it's so good, yeah. I'm pretty sure we won't get any emails like that, Richard, <laughs> at all. Now, Space 1999, actually, when I finish this very long tour that I've been on for most of my life, is uh, one of the things <laughs> I'm going to uh, sit down and watch in its entirety when I get a bit of time to myself, because I do remember watching it back in the day, and I'd love to revisit it, actually. Even all that glisters. See really? If I, uh, see if I agree with Chris, yeah. Mm, yeah let's see. I, I I bet you won't get there. Or if oh. you do, you'll start it and you'll get to the rock zapping Tony and then you'll be oh. off. No, I must persevere. Anyway, but, uh, yeah. there we go. I mean, there's still so many series that we haven't touched on yet. So yes. let's, uh, let's hope the randomizer keeps generating some random stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and there'll be more of that next pod. Yes, and remember that uh, you can catch up with all our previous podcasts on iTunes and Spotify and Stitcher and all sorts of other platforms. Uh, Jamie puts them up on YouTube as well. Uh, they include interviews with all sorts of people such as um, Sophia Miles and Sophie Aldred and Chris Packham and Wayne Forrester. And, Newman. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lisa Mazumba. Yeah, Shane Rimmer and um, David Graham I think is there, isn't Yeah, he? we've got a David Graham yeah, on there. Yes, that's right. So uh, yeah, have a Parker themed um, day and uh, go and listen to that one. Yeah, so it's all up there. Uh, and in the meantime, of course, you can uh, subscribe to whatever platform you're listening to us on so that you get notifications each time a new episode appears. Uh, and please do rate and review us because we love it when uh, you leave us uh, little reviews. And, uh, of course, share it with all your friends so that they know that we're here and they also know that uh, the future's looking bright if you're a Jerry Anderson fan. Exactly. Why is that, Richard? Because there's brand new Jerry Anderson stuff being made right now. Thank you very much for saying that. It wouldn't be the same without it really you saying it really wouldn't. that. Indeed. Anyway, uh, please go away now and watch Firestorm again if you've watched it already and watch yeah. it the first time if you haven't watched it. Yeah. Uh, and share it with your chums because the more views, the merrier. Yes. And, and it'll make our lives more fun. I mean, it's been uh, what? It's been up on a couple of weeks. I mean, I've got three weeks now. I can't see any reason why it shouldn't reach half a million, really. I mean, we're getting well, close. It'll take, it'll take its time, but it, wow. it'll it'll definitely get there. Yeah, exactly. Um, but no, it's brilliant. For you know, for an unknown property mm. to have that many views already is just brilliant. So yeah. we're, we're very very proud. Yeah. Um, and uh, tomorrow, after the date of this recording, but yes. last week uh, after the date of release, yes, um, I've got a fantastic uh, writers workshop that we're doing uh, for Firestorm. So nice. Exciting news there, and uh, I'll be making sure to to take some pickies there. May share them, may Ooh, not. Let's see. Yeah, uh, but it's very exciting about this this stage, kind of bringing it all together and getting stories out there. So lots to look forward to. Lovely, anyway, brilliant. Should we go away, Richard? I think we ought to now, shouldn't we? Really. Brilliant. Well, thanks, thanks for listening, for everybody. Us. Yes. We'll see you next week. Yeah. See you then. Bye. Bye. One complete. Let's go. Spectrum is green.
sing us out, Richard, with some... Uh... I might send you a file. <laughs> no, seriously, I have been giving it some thought. And I have can you? see that it's it's touched... You know, I've really touched on something out there, haven't I? The, the country's behind me on this. So I might... Um, when you I'll... say the country, do you well, mean... Well, at least two or three people have said they enjoyed it. Yes. So I might record a little something special today and uh, send it to you to put on the end of the podcast. And I'll tack it on. Yeah. So if you're listening to this now, then hang on until we stop talking and then hang on a bit further and you might hear something special from Richard, unless I deem it to be so terrible that I can't possibly put it on. <laughs> oh, the country holds its breath. Uh, like those three people hold their breath. <laughs> yeah, let's not keep them waiting. Thanks, Dickie. Speak Cheers, to you bye. soon. Bye. I would now like to perform for you the Captain Scarlet theme tune, Captain Black Friday merch mix. Magic, 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 magic,